Hello, my name is uh, Thomas Oellerich. I'm an attending physician in the Department of Hematology and Oncology in Frankfurt, and at the same time, I'm a research group leader there, and I'm responsible for the lymphoma program in Frankfurt. And it's a great pleasure today to give an expert interview uh, as um, a part of the uh, ASH uh, lymphoma uh, conference here. And I want to summarize uh, a few highlights uh, from the first session of the conference uh, focusing on uh, mechanisms and oncogenic mechanisms in lymphoma pathogenesis. And um, in this session, three main areas were covered. So uh, area one was uh, epigenetics, so epigenetic rewiring in lymphoma and transcriptional dysregulation. The second important area was B cell receptor signal transduction and uh, the therapeutic implications thereof. And finally, um, um, immune uh, uh, checkpoint mechanisms, especially with a uh, focus on Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, have been discussed. So I want to start with the epigenetics part and um, highlight a, a, a few things um, in this regard. So um, it was uh, discussed that yeah, epigenetics uh, is an important, or an epigenetic dysregulation is an important um, um, a mechanism in uh, lymphoma genesis. So it was highlighted that many mutations uh, and genomic aberrations target uh, epigenetic regulators, uh, like for example, uh, crep EP, EP300 and others. And this leads to epigenetic rewiring of these cells towards um, um, a favoring a, a BCL6-driven lymphoma program. And a particular focus today was uh, on uh, histone acid transferases, and it was shown that histone acid transferase, and, uh, uh, histone tr uh, acid transferase activity is often um, uh, uh, diminished, not lost, not completely lost, but diminished through heterozygous deletion of, for example, a crappy P, and this. Uh, favors um, uh, an oncogenic BCA6 driven program. And now an idea to exploit this therapeutically is, for, uh, for example, using HDEC inhibitors to increase uh, histone as a um, uh, transferase activity in these lymphomas. So these um, 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 uh, this concept has been tested already in preclinical models and also in early trials. So uh, the data so far is not convincing, and that why uh, that's uh, based on this data. Uh, uh, Ricardo della Ferreira introduced now a new concept showing that uh, uh, now uh, histone acid transferase inhibitors might be even more useful to further uh, uh, downregulate uh, histone acid uh, transferase activi activity in these lymphoma cells that have already diminished activity. And this uh, uh, seems to, at least in preclinical models, uh, drive these cells into apoptosis. And this could become an important therapeutic concept uh, because lymphoma cells uh, that are targeted uh, through, for example, um, uh, heterozygous loss of histone acid transferases are hypersensitive to such inhibitors. So um, now I want to uh, move on uh, and uh, discuss uh, B cell receptor signaling in the um, uh, context of aggressive lymphomas particularly. Um, so um, in the abstract I presented, uh, uh, um, I discuss the role of the mighty BCR signaling complex in a certain subtype of aggressive lymphomas, the activated B cell subtype. Uh, and uh, we found using proteogenomic strategies that B cell receptor signaling in this very aggressive lymphoma subtype is wired very differently from other lymphoma types and also differently uh, compared to normal B cells. So we found an intracellular um, a signaling complex uh, composed of mighty 88 toll-like receptor 9 and the B cell receptor and this complex is sitting on endosomes where it drives a very potent NF kappa B uh, a signaling response and uh, this marker has um, uh, yeah, um, also ther um, translational implications because we think that uh, yeah, the presence of the mighty BCR might help us to identify patients that respond to certain B cell receptor signaling inhibitors like 
like BTK targeted drugs, for example, ibrutinib. So we find that the cells that express this complex are hyper responsive uh, to these uh, drugs. And we think that um, the mighty BCR discovery provides an explanation for the uh, synergy that we observe for certain BCR related signaling inhibitors. For example, uh, synergy between BTK and mTOR targeted drugs because as soon as we combine these drugs, we completely deplete uh, the mighty BCR of its key components. We lose NF kappa B signaling and uh, cells are uh, driven into apoptosis. So we think it's an important uh, predictive biomarker. This has to be tested now in a prospective fashion uh, in a clinical uh, trials uh, and um, and we think that yeah, mighty BCR signaling is a yeah, key oncogenic signaling program for the MCD subtype of activated uh, B cell type lymphomas. MCD subtype meaning uh, the um, uh, ABC lymphomas that are characterized by mutations in the adapter protein MIDI8 8 8 and co-occurring mutations in the B cell receptor itself. And the second abstract um, uh, regarding BCR signaling highlighted um, uh, the um, f a potential functional role of BCR loss during lymphoma genesis, especially in the context of aggressive MIG-driven lymphomas. So it was highlighted that uh, a certain percentage of aggressive lymphomas loses um, uh, the B cell receptor at the cell surface, so they lose BCR uh, expression. Uh, BCR is a key regulator of survival, but these cells rewire in a way that they become independent of the B cell receptor and independent uh, also on the BCR uh, related or driven uh, uh, survival pathways. This means in terms of uh, therapeutic implications that these cells become resistant against uh, certain uh, B cell receptor signaling inhibitors and this means we need to uh, figure out what the exact biology of these BCR negative aggressive lymphomas is and uh, how uh, we would be able to target it uh, in the future. And now the uh, last uh, major aspect I want to cover is, as I said in the beginning, uh, the um, uh, immune, the aspect of the immune microenvironment uh, in the context of um, a Hodgkin, so classical Hodgkin um, uh, disease. So uh, this abstract uh, was presented uh, by Christian Steidel and uh, he uh, um, showed a very intriguing and interesting uh, single cell sequencing analysis to uh, further elucidate the composition of the um, uh, Hodgkin immune microenvironment. Uh, so now by using these um, uh, innovative and cutting edge techniques, they found uh, apart from what has been known, so known, the known Th2 uh, polarized uh, pro-inflammatory microenvironment, they found uh, Th1 cell subsets uh, that uh, express high levels of um, uh, PD-1 uh, and uh, that are of course uh, um, uh, um, um, inhibited or at least uh, dampened in their uh, immune activity and they found in addition to the PD-1 positive T cell subsets also lack three positive subsets uh, that might be important for uh, um, the uh, Hodgkin therapy because uh, this could be therapeutically exploited uh, by uh, the uh, administration of uh, immune checkpoint blockers focusing on the classical uh, PD-1, PD-L1 uh, uh, axis, but also focusing uh, on the LAC3 uh, immune checkpoint. And uh, he nicely showed that uh, LAC3 uh, high uh, Hodgkins uh, are characterized by a poor uh, overall survival, and this could maybe change as soon as such uh, patients would be treated with these uh, novel uh, checkpoint inhibitors, not only focusing on the PD-1 axis, but also focusing on uh, LAC3. I'd like to invite you to our conversation and want to encourage you uh, to uh, visit us at uh, Twitter and uh, join on our conversation. And I'd like to thank you uh, for your uh, attention.